Howdy y'all. Eric the Car Guy here. I've been asked about this video probably more than any other. Eric the Car Guy, what's in your toolbox? Well, I'm just going to jump right to it. I'm going to go over some of my favorite tools and some tools I made. And at some point I may even show you how to make those tools. So you want to have a look inside my box? Yeah, that wasn't right. Here's something funny. First thing on top of my box is the camera bag. <laughs> the camera bag um, obviously carries the camera because there wouldn't be an Eric the Car Guy without a camera bag. One of the things that Eric the Car Guy likes more than anything else is not having to work too hard and leverage is one of those things that can help you do that. So very long, very stout pry bar. If you have asked me about my air compressor, this is it right here. Um, it is a 26 gallon, not really great air compressor for doing what I do. In fact, it's probably just barely enough. Let's start with the side box and look in there. I carry around a cordless screwdriver because uh, basically these things are great for taking apart door, door panels and things like that really quickly. Uh, we've got a DVOM, a good one. Uh, good one is important here. Angle die grinder that I use quite extensively. Uh, cleaning aluminum heads, I use these plastic things. Cleaning just about everything else, I use the cookies. Don't eat these. Also have probably my favorite electrical diagnosis tool ever. And I have two of these. I have one of these at home also. But this is the power probe, and what this can do is not only tell you if you have power and ground and give you a nice little noise, but you can also supply power and ground to a circuit. Um, <laughs> we'll talk about that when we talk about that, but that's something we really need to be careful of. We don't want to fry things, so you have to know what you're doing here. Down inside here we have lots and lots of drill bits. Uh, burn them up a lot. Even though I use lubrication and I have a question as to whether or not me using the oil is actually helping to burn them up. Here we have the refrigerant leak detector. This will sniff around and help you find AC leaks. Uh, this is the brake caliper tool which you've seen in another video. That is a tap and die set. You need those. But the ones that don't come in the kit are the 12 by 125s. And if you're working on Asian vehicles, you need a 12 by 125. If you don't have a 12 by 125, get one. You'll need it. Now this drawer has lots of neat things. I love my magnets. I love being able to not have to bend over and pick things up. I make lots of my tools. Um, this is just a little short connector. This is all you need to get the check engine lights out of uh, older Hondas and Acuras. I'll show you a video on that someday. One of my favorite tools that I made, this is actually for uh, soldering wires together. You put the wires together, you got the alligator clips, hold them in place. All this is is a piece of house wiring and a couple of, you know, household wiring that's a little stiffer than automotive stuff that has a couple of alligator clips soldered to the outside of it. A couple of these will help you get a drum off that wants to stay on. Those little bolt holes, that's what these are. I think these are 8 by 125 not sure. What else we got in here? Oh! I used to work in the grocery business for a really long time, so I have lots of box cutters. And they just house like regular razor, razor blades, things like that. All my feeler gauges for adjusting valves, electrical tape, finer drill bits. Uh, this, uh, this right here helps you uh, more accurately drill holes. This long drill bit right here is what sometimes is used to clean out the EGR passages like say on an older Accord that doesn't have a removable plate like in another video I did. But this is what I use to get antenna masts apart on Hondas. Those of you with older Hondas that have antenna masts that have issues, well, um, that's how you get them out, if you can get them out. Circuit breakers. I use these a lot for electrical diagnosis on short circuits. You put this in place of a fuse, and instead of blowing a bunch of fuses, this clicks on and off. Moving on. My keys. Uh, box cutter. Uh, I gotta tell you, when it comes to like your ratchets 
and your hand tools. Buy the best ones you can afford. This one here is a snap-on. I love it. I also have Mac stuff. I don't really play favorites when it comes to that kind of thing. If the tool works, great. Um, tubing cutter for the occasions when I need that tire gauge. And you'll notice I have lots and lots of these. You know what? If you don't have a pocket screwdriver, get one. It's often referred to as the 11th finger. Uh, and I think you've seen this in another video. This is my spark tester. These I use for holding timing belts in place. Yes, you can grab these at any office supply store. Uh, sometimes during installation of accessories on new cars, you need a tape measure. And I think this one actually does uh, measure. Because many of the instructions, yeah, it does. Many of the instructions on Asian vehicles are in metric. Yes, they actually are a part of the 21st century. Uh, moving on to the drawer with the pliers. You recognize these. I use these extensively. Giant channel locks. Probably my favorite hose pliers right here. Um, you can get really down into places and pull things off. I also use these to get those stubborn plastic connectors that won't disconnect sometimes. Very strong pair of pliers that is sometimes employed to uh, get the springs off of Asian drum brakes. Um, giant hose clamp pliers. Those work well. And of various angles I have a 90 degree angle set here and probably my favorite set ever is this. I don't know what this is. Is it a 45 or what have you. Uh, this is fun. Someday I'll show you how to take a McDonald's straw, put a little uh, what's called dum-dum, it's uh, a sealant that goes on firewalls, on the end of it. And you can use this to launch straws like a mile. CV, bo ju uh, CV boot tools. This is for tightening CV boot bands. This is also another tool for tightening CV boot bands. Uh, Multi-groove adjustable pliers. Ever heard it referred to as that? Or West Virginia fix-all. Or whatever state is close to you where you like to make jokes about inbredness. Um, obviously for electrical work. This is for removing plastic clips. Also for CV boots or actually removing inner snap rings is probably a better description of that. This is also, uh, these are hog ring pliers for doing work on upholstery, which I put a lot of seat heaters in and use those extensively. Somebody kept asking me about my impact driver. Well, here it is, the snap-on set and why you break in bits. Well, you know, because I do. I've got a Mac version of this too, and to be honest, it doesn't seem to break bits nearly as much as this one does, and it is of a different design, so perhaps there's something to that. <sighs> lots and lots of stuff here. Probably the most notable is going to be these swivel sockets that I use. I've got a 10 millimeter and a 12 millimeter. If you've got work on Hondas, you're going to use those a lot. I also have chrome versions that are a little bit shallow. Those are good. Um, you know, 3 8 to half inch adapters. A couple of universal joints. Various extensions. Now, wrenches. This is probably one of my favorite wrenches ever. Got a whole set of these actually. Uh, that one was a this one was a 1719. This one is a 1412. These are really nice for just using lots of leverage and getting down into tight places. Absolutely love these. Flare wrenches. These are a must, uh, and a good set of these will save you so much. I, I can't stress enough how important it is. To purchase the best hand tools you can buy. Don't cheap out with the hand tools. There's other tools you can cheap out with, but not hand tools. You see, I also have the Mac version of these long wrenches. I like them so much. And to tell you the truth, I don't have a preference for either one, but this Mac set has like the 1514, whereas I don't have that with the snap-on set. So I, I like these long wrenches that I can get down into places with. But uh, yeah, I've got all three in here. I've got Mac Co over here and this set of wrenches. This is probably the first set of professional wrenches that I bought. Had them for years. They work great. Feel good in the hand. But, and I also have like old school Craftsman wrenches. You don't use these big ones that much except for like on AC lines and stuff like that. But I also have the, the professional ones in my toolbox at home. And I've got to say the professional Craftsman stuff is impressive. The difference will come in with hand tools as far as clearance and construction. Like the Craftsman has a much thicker head here, 
so it doesn't necessarily get down into the spots as well. So you, you weigh it out, but you, you can never go wrong by spending on your uh, your tools. Uh, sockets, sockets, and more sockets. I use my swivel sockets extensively. Uh, once again, I have a mixed bag here. I mean, these are Sun, these are Craftsman, these are off a tool truck that I bought many years ago. Impact sockets. Uh, if you're going to do any kind of axle nut work, I got a 32 and a 36 here. You do need a 30 on occasion, which I do not have. Here's an O2 sensor socket. Here's another O2 sensor socket. Um, ah, the brake tool. You saw that in another video. And uh, sometimes some busted sockets and things like that that I use. I'll show you further down stuff that I made as special tools. The beating drawer. My favorite hammer, I call it Thor. Um, it's gotten old. A guy in an exhaust shop showed me this trick. I actually broke the handle off this hammer at one time. And this is uh, just the muffler outlet to, a, I think it was a Toyota or something like that, that I just welded on here. And as you can see, I'm not a very good welder. I'll work on that. Uh, lead pipe. What do you use a lead pipe for, Eric the car guy? Well, let me show you. Don't ask where I'm holding that. <laughs> you got to break something loose. There you go. You slip the lead pipe over the end of it, and you got serious leverage. You got enough leverage, you can move the earth. Somebody said that once, and they're right. You can. And here. <laughs> This has created much controversy. The XD45, which is actually, I found out, I, I just spit out that those letters and numbers, is apparently a gun. <laughs> but no, uh, I, I think this is for some kind of highway thing. It's like some kind of bolt holding something together, but it happens to be of just the right size to knock hubs out of bearing assemblies. Various attachments for my air hammer are down in here. Um, stuff that I don't use a whole lot. Here's a puller, sometimes used, cheaped out on that. Here's a, an input shaft that I use uh, to hit on, which I probably shouldn't because this is case hardened stuff and it'll shatter. Um, lady slipper, come on. I mean, they, they put giant things and construction sites together with these things. Uh, you're putting an engine in a car, you run these through the engine mount bolts. Ah, <laughs> and the accurate clutch alignment tool. But for that, I also have the tree. These are all clutch alignment tools. I call that the tree. Back over here. And we have our chisel and punch set. Believe it or not, I got this whole set for 20 bucks from a guy. And it served me well. It really has. And if you want to hit something and hopefully not damage it, there's brass on one end, rubber on the other. Sometimes I use this. Pipe wrench, you use that on occasion too. Pry bars and screwdrivers. Pick set. Uh, valve stem removal tool. These are actually part of my... Uh, remember the video I did on serpentine belts? This is a special tool for getting those out. And these are the sockets too, the special tool some of that stuff in there but I'm sure you've seen screwdrivers before these are sometimes helpful and this one actually came with a ratchet it goes on like this um, I also have these J bolts for batteries these are sometimes used for other things in actual Honda repair procedures. Uh, this helps pop loose uh, plastic rivets. And this is a special seal removal tool that I made. Uh, this, if you've got an old Honda with a carburetor, this is the only screwdriver that will get in behind it to adjust the idle. Ah uh, yes, the fun drawer. These are uh, for holding uh, timing belt tensioners. These are for removing the, uh, I guess you want to call it an axle shaft from on an Acura Legend. 
from a transmission. Uh, lots of tools in here. I got my vacuum gauge, my compression gauge, my vacuum pump, uh, a degree gauge for when you're tightening cylinder heads. I've got some of these. Uh, if you've got a Cadillac North Star, uh, I feel sorry for you. Here's a cam seal installer that some of you might have seen in the Honda Accord video. Another clutch alignment tool. Um, and obviously the calculator. Magnifying glass. All kinds of these valves that I keep just in case. Lubricants. Oh, and look. I haven't seen these in a while. These are all my Acura training things. Stuff these down in the box. I think I got my ASC stuff around here somewhere too. Um, ooh, valve spring remover thing for Honda heads because they're down inside. You can put this on a valve spring removal tool and compress those. Uh, I can't remember what this does. It does something. <laughs> oh. And this is the this here is the tubing that I use on the brake bleeder tool, which we should go over the, the other tools that I made. Uh, at some point, I got some shrink tubing, I got some bulbs, got some old keys. Ooh, here's a nice one. You like this old socket that was busted that I welded onto uh, a tap that actually taps out spark plug holes on Hondas for uh, putting time certs in. Best way to get down in there. So, that covers most of what's in here. Believe it or not, pens are very important. And finally we have the bottom drawer. Once again, I got a puller, got a couple of uh, attachments for my pressure tester, for my radiator, uh, my timing light parts, cutoff wheel, my impacts and my air tools, which have really gotten old. Then I have a 3 8 torque wrench and a half inch torque wrench. In here, we've got my gloves, my pressure tester, solder gun, snap ring plier set, Another trim removal tool, uh, some Honda Bond, some gloves. These are the standard size wrenches I have. I don't use these as much, so these are my old Craftsman's that I had. More old Craftsman's. These are for removing uh, uh, Quick Connect. They're Quick Connect, but not Quick Disconnect. You need tools like this to disconnect things like on Fords and Chevy, fuel lines and AC lines, stuff like that. Flashlight, ooh, the ET flashlight. Check this out. Ouch. Ouch. Then we have, oh, more stuff. A bunch of extra bulbs and fuses. Tire plugging tools, safety glasses. You know how I am about that. Wire brush, battery terminal cleaners. Uh, specific gravity tester for checking your battery and coolant. Never really do that. Some brake tools. Ah, you'll like this one. This is the Honda tool for removing the trunk springs if you're going to put stiffer ones in to put like a, uh, a spoiler or something in a car. Because if you put a spoiler on a car, it's going to make the trunk heavier, so you have to put stiffer springs in so that the trunk actually goes up. And, -da, and here we have fuel pressure tester oil filter wrenches, another oil filter wrench. This, uh, you get a prize if you guess what this is. No? Nope. Well, remember this from the valve adjusting uh, video? Well, this is the valve adjustment tool for an NSX. It's the only way you can really get down in there and do anything. You put a 17 millimeter on the back of this and adjust there. Those are fun to do. You'll end up with lots of scratches on your arms. Uh, just a bag of Allen wrenches that I sometimes use. And that covers the toolbox. Alright, battery charger, NICs, extra fluids, spill-free funnel. Love that. Love that. Uh, this is actually a modified tool for me. This is the Honda tool. Like uh, if you've got a K-series engine, uh, this keeps the oil, when you take the oil filter off, off of the frame, so it actually channels it away. It normally only comes with that magnet, but I added that one. So now I've got two magnets on that. I really like using these. 
These are magnetic trays. You've got a lot of things to, to uh, a lot of fasteners or whatever. I've got two of them. Got another one here. A lot of fasteners to take apart. It's good to keep them in order. Um, got my AC gauges over there. Actually, that's my old AC gauges. Oh, and of course, the big red wrench. Oh, one of my favorite tools. You know, you can always use a bigger hammer. Always use a bigger hammer. And over here we have my vise, my um, wire wheel with a stone on it, um, mixed bags and nuts and bolts. Newest addition, our vacuum pump and new set of AC gauges because uh, people like their AC fixed. You know about these already, um, quite simply, uh, put together like that. And you see this right here, this three drawer craftsman thing, which is now the bolt bin. This is Eric the Car Guy's first toolbox. I used to carry this to and from my job and school and everywhere. I used to go to people's houses and fix cars. This was the box I did it with. In fact, it's so old that or I weighed it down so much I broke the plastic handle off of it. But yes, many memories with this thing and <laughs> went a lot of miles fixing a lot of cars with it before I got to this point. To be here with you. Well that's a tour of the toolbox here at the shop. I have another one at home with other stuff in it. Mostly older stuff. I do most of my work here so. Oh one more thing. See that? I like using those carts to wheel stuff around in. It's really cool to be able to put your tools there or parts or whatever. I find it very convenient. I hope you enjoyed this uh, little tour little tour of my shop and my tools and that kind of thing. And uh, how about we do this? I showed you my tools. Why don't you show me yours? Make a video showing me your toolbox or your special tool or some tool that you made or some tool that some guy gave you that works great, something like that. Post it as a video response below. Uh, let's make this the tool video and tool page and take it from there. Anyway, I'm Eric the Car Guy. You can always find me at ericthecarguy.com. And, of course, stay dirty. Dirty.